So you just purchased your new Xtool F1 and are waiting for it to arrive or just unboxed it. It doesn't power on, your engravings are stretched out, and the thing beeps endlessly. Well, you have come to the right place. In this video, we will go over the common mistakes, misconceptions, and issues that users will experience in their first few days of owning an Xtool F1. But first, we will address a common Velf Creations question. Let's get started. Let's go over our most asked question. What are the settings? The main purpose of our channel is to share settings with our followers. So here are three places to find our settings. First is in the description or caption of the post. This is the most common place. And if you can't find the description on a YouTube short, simply long press on the video. Next, we may include the settings in an overlay on the video itself. Finally, we may also include the settings in the comments. These locations apply to all of our accounts, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Also check out our settings compilation video where you can get a PDF of all our most recent settings. So you unbox your Xtool F1, plug it in, switch on the power, and it doesn't turn on. It doesn't move up or down, and you cannot see the focusing lights on the base plate. Now what? The F1 has an emergency stop button on the left side. Simply twist it clockwise to release it, and the F1 should automatically power on. Okay, my F1 powers on, but when I click the start button, I get this message on Xtool Creative Space. Your F1 will come with two USB keys that will plug into the back. If you are missing this key, Xtool Creative Space won't allow you to start a job. All you have to do is plug it in and your issue will be resolved. Here is the next most common issue. You go to focus your F1 and only see the red dot, but not the blue. This is because the F1 lens ships with a protective cover. Simply remove it and you will be back to seeing both dots. Happy focusing! Sometimes you are so excited to just pick up your material after engraving it, but we recommend not to move your material until you are comfortable with the settings. This applies to tumblers with the RA2 Pro as well. It is best to visually inspect your design, and if it requires another pass, you can update the settings and run it again. Or you can simply double press the start button to rerun the previous job. Neat. With the latest version of XCS 2.0, an updated auto planning was introduced. This is such a great feature and speeds up engraving. However, you may notice some lines, especially when using the IR laser. If this is the case for you, jump into Xtool Creative Space, select User Defining under Processing Path, and disable the Smart option. This issue is less noticeable on wood, and hopefully it is something that can be resolved in the future. Let's say you have a beautiful hand painting photo of your wife and you want to engrave it onto a durable black metal card to keep in your wallet. But as you are engraving, you notice that she is looking a bit negative. Well, luckily for you, that is an easy fix. All you need to do is select the photo in XCS, open image adjustments, and select invert. This is recommended anytime you are engraving on something dark. And there you have it, your wife is looking as beautiful as the day you met her. Nice! A common misconception is that you always need to select a material when engraving, scoring, or cutting. Let's take a metal business card as an example. Users will enter our settings into the parameters. Power, 100, speed, 400 in lines per centimeter to 300. Then, they will open up the material panel and select the black metal business card settings. Doing this will override any settings that you have manually entered. As you can see here, the lines per centimeter change to a lower 160. Basically, the materials are just a preset, so it is a good go-to if you don't know where to start, but can be ignored if you are manually entering in your parameters.
Xtool Creative Space allows a user to import either a PNG and JPEG or a SVG. Here we have an SVG on the left and a PNG on the right. XCS will handle these two differently. An SVG, or also known as a vector, will give you the options to set power, speed, and lines per centimeter. A PNG and JPEG, or also known as a bitmap, will allow you to set things like power, dot duration, and DPI. Typically, to get the cleanest engraving of something like text or logos, it is best to use a vector. If your logo is in a PNG or JPEG format, XCS will allow you to trace that image to change it to a vector. So you click the start button and here a you go to click start job in XCS. Click cancel. Have no fear, this is an easy fix too. Head over to XCS and while connected to your laser, select the settings icon in the top right corner and disable buzzer reminders. Ah, sweet, sweet silence. Sometimes you may experience some fading towards the top of your engraving when using the IR laser. There is one more thing you can update in the F1 settings, infrared ray preheat. The IR laser works best at a certain operating temperature. In some cases, when you are in a cold environment, or even when you run the IR for the first time in the session, it may start engraving at a lower power. This option will preheat the laser before starting. But keep in mind, this option will reset with each new project or XES session. You are noticing when you are using the Chuck and the RA2 Pro that your design is coming out a bit wide like this top engraving of our logo. This means that the perimeter that you measured is incorrect and is too small. Or like this middle one that looks squished, which means that your perimeter is too large. In XCS, be sure to enter the correct perimeter here. Also keep in mind that oftentimes the tape measure that is shipped with your F1U centimeters, so if your tumbler is 27 centimeters around, you need to enter 270 for the perimeter since XCS accepts millimeters by default. If you want to change this from millimeters to inches, you can hop into the XCS settings in the top left corner and update it there. And with that corrected, we now get a perfect engraving on our tumbler without any distortion. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share if you would like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and stay creative.